Welcome to Acrylic Paint Monoprints. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a quick and easy way to make monoprints using acrylic paints or any craft paints that you have on hand and some acetate film, or my preference is this material called Duralar, which is an acetate alternative. It's a little bit heavier, it holds up a little bit better over long time use and washing. So, so that I can see it well on my board here, I'm going to put it on some white paper. And I have some papers handy that I'm going to be using. I have some white sketchbook paper um, from a mixed media book. I have some printed paper where I rolled some ink. And I have a gessoed piece of scrapbooking paper. And to prepare this, I like to use an old egg carton because I need to mix this matte gel, Liquitex matte gel medium, which serves as an extender for your paints and also keeps them from drying so quickly because with mono prints, you need to be able to use your paint as a little painting and then get a print out of it. So I'm going to use three colors for my mono print. So I'm going to put three little spoonfuls of extender in my egg carton. And then I'm going to use some cerulean blue and squirt some in there. And I'm going to use some cadmium red hue. These are Galeria paint, Galeria paints, I'm not sure you say that. Um, they are from Michaels. They are less expensive than the standard Wind Windsor Newton Professionals, but they work quite well for this project. And last, some cadmium yellow medium. So I now have the three primary colors. And I have some little sticks that I'm going to use to stir up my paints. So I'll stir up my blue so that the extender is in there. I'll stir up my red. And stir up my yellow. So I'm just going to work with the primaries because they're fun to mix as you go. And then I'm just going to use some acrylic brushes. I have my squared off acrylic brushes and some paper towel. And for this one, I'm not going to try to do anything too fancy. I'm going to do just a quick little floral like you saw in my first one, little petals. For my flowers. And you do need to, even though you have extender, you do need to work pretty quickly when you're doing something like this. Because it will, even with the extender, it is going to dry out. And because I do want to have a green, I'm going to take some of my yellow and just move it over into another section of my eggshell, egg carton, and add a little bit of blue. Stir that up. until I get a green. And if I wanted a lighter green, I could add more yellow. I could add a little touch of white, but I'm just going to leave it as it is and create some little leaves and some stems. And for this, you, know, you just might want to suggest the image that you're going for. And once you have all your paints in place, you'll simply take your paper, lay it 
flat down and gently press. And peel back and you have your print. Now the reason these are called mono prints, mono meaning one, is that generally you can only get one good print from your mono printing paper. So what you'll see when I take this little piece of paper here that I have, I lay it on here, I'm not going to get as much of the image and probably not as vibrantly colored. But I can pull, I can sometimes pull a little bit more ink off of there and get a little bit more of an image. Now this one here is looking a little like a butterfly, so I can see some potential for doing some line work on that. But at this point, it's probably pretty well spent. I could apply more color over the top of this in order to repeat the design on another piece, or I could use that as a jumping off point for going in a totally different direction. and cover more of my Dorlar or your acetate film with the paints. Now what we're now we're going to end up with a totally different look. Much more just coloring your space in a more abstracted way. And you'll see more mixing and blending of your colors as well when you're doing this. My students loved to make monoprints. Um, terribly messy when you're working with children, but really fun. Because there's that element of surprise, there's that element of not knowing how it's going to turn out that just makes it a lot of fun to do. So for this one, I'm going to use my green paper, flip it over, and I have a very colorful mono print. that can serve as a background or can be torn and used in a variety of other ways. So mono printing, great fun. To clean your Duralar, this is just a piece of sketchbook paper. You could use computer paper, anything. And just take your Duralar face down onto the paper. You'll get a little bit of a print from the leftover acrylics. And then just so that we don't have a lot of paint going down the drains, because that's not a good thing, you can also take a paper towel and mop up some of the remaining acrylics. And I had students do this in the classroom before we wash them at the sink we wiped off as much of the paint as possible. And then just a little soap and water and let it air dry and you will have a clean piece of Duralar ready to use again. Here's a quick list of the supplies that I used for this project. Any acrylic paints that you have or that you can get at your local craft store will be fine. I chose to use the red, blue, and yellow, the primary colors, but again, any colors you like will work fine. Liquitex Matte Gel Medium helps to keep your paints from drying out so quickly while you're working. Uh, Liquitex is simply a brand. Whatever's available in your local craft store is fine. Brushes. I use an egg carton for my paint tray for mixing. I like Duralar film, but if you can't get a hold of any locally and don't want to have to order them online, any acetate film or transparency film will work. Any paper you want to print on? and then paper towels and some water for cleanup. Most of these supplies can be found at your local craft and hobby store. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel and get regular updates when new videos are posted. 
I'll be putting up tutorials suitable for adults, for teens, and even for adults and teens to use with young children. So subscribe. I'd love to have you keep coming back for more.